Hi, I'm John Mancini with Content Results, and I've been doing a lot of work recently with Quality Associates, QAI, in the context of thinking about the implications of the M1921 set of deadlines for transfer of electronic records to NARA. And in that context, I've been talking with Scott Swiderski about some of the issues associated with any digitization project. And so I thought that it might be interesting to have a con set of conversations with him and talk about the elements of successful digitization, um, because I was very impressed with the practical way that they approach these projects. So the first session, we'll talk about this whole question of how do you get started? How do you frame a project to begin with? The second one, we'll talk about how do you price this thing right? And that has dimensions both on the agency side as well as on the vendor side in terms of thinking, you know, in terms of not all projects are alike. The third thing is talk about some of the unique aspects of federal contracting, because uh, as I've learned from a lot of experience with companies and with uh, agencies, it's a very different uh, kettle of fish in the federal government than it is in the private sector. And then the fourth thing is talk about a typical timeline for a project. So I hope you enjoy the series, and I will post links to all of the videos that we've done in this series at the end, and thank you for your time. In this segment, we want to talk a little bit about the whole question of contracting and how the business requirements for a project meet uh, all the nuances of federal contracting. So Scott, talk a little bit about some of those key issues that take an idea, take a set of projects that people wanna do. You've had conversations about how, it, how much it might cost and what the prices might be and all that kind of stuff. You know, how do you get this stuff contracted? Yeah, so um, sometimes it's, 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 uh, it can be very complicated. Um, you know, moving from the, the discussion around what the, the true requirements of the task are through the, the consideration around the, the acquisition strategy. Um, I think um, I'll, I'll share with you, you know, a, a, few, a few recommendations, I think, that help that process to go, you know, smoother than, than not. Um, developing a strong and comprehensive statement of work is, um, is, is one of the key things. I think that by the time uh, you're, you're aligned with you know, a procurement uh, discussion and, and folks that are attempting to support the acquisition of these type of services, uh, that, that, you, that you've done your due diligence up front and, and that the information you provided them is really beyond adequate, right? That if there was a, a role for the vendor to play to come on site and, and scope um, you know, th this, this type of work, uh, I certainly would keep the door open to, to that kind of thing. Um, I, 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 I think that it's important too that, you know, if, if it's a competed opportunity, which we'd recommend that all opportunities be competed from a federal agency perspective, uh, that, that you, um, you know, be cautious of, of the low bid, right? Does, does the low bid necessarily mean that I'm in uh, good hands with somebody who has the same competence level of, of somebody that didn't, you know, provide the low bid. And, and are these folks, you know, that have responded with the low bid, are they capable of keeping my project, you know, uh, on, on the timeline that was suggested? And, and are they capable of meeting the deliverables that were discussed on, on the business side? So, um, you know, that, that's an area I think that's important. The, the other um, uh, area that I'll recommend um, become relevant in the how do you best contract for these services Look at the model, right? So the, the industry is matured. It, you know, we've been providing these services for decades. Uh, and, and what are the traditional models, right? So are there firm fixed unit costs uh, on top of time and material components? Um, you know, what, what, what does all this look like? Uh, and, and so from the perspective of how you're going to ask your vendors to respond, have we given them enough information uh, that, that allows you to have a true comparison of, you know, key past performances and capabilities and, and, um, and, and are you able to, to really make that apples to apples comparison, right? So that there aren't key advantages necessarily for, for one vendor over the other. Um, I'd also suggest that, that, that you conduct and, and perform pilot projects, right? I think uh, the, the exchange that takes place in the course of the pilot is as beneficial um, to, to the vendor as it is to the federal agency. I think I think there's, um, you know, not only quality expectations that are that are defined, but um, 
you, you should be able to get some sense of, uh, of a rough ROM uh, for, for moving forward. And so as, as business as the business group is connecting with the procurement and the acquisitions conversation, there's there's already a, a bit of a level set, right, around what something like this might cost, right? And so, um, you know, the, those pilots and proof of concepts and so forth have helped to sort of flush out from the, the vendor's perspective, what exactly might need to be done. And they've probably been given uh, a, a, a decent opportunity to see what the, the variability and the range of this project might look like. Uh, so, so some of the key feedback, you know, in terms of getting things done, there's a lot of different vehicles uh, that, that one can consider. Obviously, we've, um, we've, we've uh, certainly acknowledged the, the role of GSA uh, in all of this with several of their uh, scenarios that are aligned to, to, um, to providing, you know, not only the consultative components, uh, the BPO pieces, the, the systems integration, the training, the user testing, and so forth. So, so uh, a lot of, uh, of scalability with with the vehicles that they have. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. You know, the federal contracting is such a nuanced business and uh, has such a long tail associated with it that I imagine sometimes it gets a little frustrating. Uh, I know it gets frustrating on the um, on the procurer side sometimes trying to you know get things through you know their own procedures, but I imagine it gets a little frustrating sometimes on the solution provider side kind of waiting for these things to come home to roost. I, I think it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a specialist area. I think where companies do business with, you know, the public sector and particularly federal. And, and it also for many private sector businesses has become the barrier for why they don't uh, do business in, in the federal space. So um, I, I would strongly encourage uh, the federal agency to evaluate uh, the past performances uh, of the, the service provider and the vendor, you know, make sure they, they are well-versed and, and have folks in the contracts group that, you know, can help them to navigate that process. Yeah, I think that that might be a good point to close on in terms of contracting, because um, that notion of making sure that the folks that you're talking to have experience in the federal space, mm -hmm. I think is really important. Because I've had people come to me and say like, oh, the federal government is such a huge potential customer. You know, I want to move into that space. And mm -hmm. I usually advise them like selling into the federal government is a different kind of a value proposition and requires a different set of disciplines than, you know, selling a piece of software directly to a for-profit company. So um, just keep that in mind, I think, uh, on everybody's part, that it's a, it's a very unique kind of business. Um, has some parallels to the private sector, but also has some unique elements that make it a challenge sometimes for people that aren't familiar with the rules of the game. Yeah, so, Scott? Particularly around that contracting topic is, is where things can get a little complex and tricky. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I, again, the, the, the ensuring that your, your vendor, your partner, uh, has the right credentials, uh, the right schedules, and, and the right experience to, to guide you through um, the what's what's needed. I think is really important. That you know, gaining evidence and and and, and making it very obvious that they have that experience. I think is going to make the overall outcome of the project much better. <laughs>